Hello, my name is Kerry Stones and I'm the course leader for Applied Human Biology. So the coursework in the first year will consist of microbiology and you will learn lots of different practical skills uh, to do with microbiology and these will include spread plates, pore plates, streak plates and smear slides. So I'm just going to do a quick demonstration of a streak plate for you. Okay, so you're going to have the, the Bunsen on the orange flame uh, which is a safety flame and you're just going to make sure that you vercon the area. So vercon is the disinfectant that we use. So this has been pre-cleaned but I'm just going to show you what you would do. So you're just going to pour a little vercon around your workstation and then you're just going to disinfect the area. You don't need to dry it, okay. Okay, so I've doubly disinfected it now. Now, the Petri dish will look something like this. So this has been prepared, pre-prepared by our technicians. When you're removing the cellophane, please make sure that the lid does not come off, okay, because then you risk contamination. And you're going to place this Petri dish as near to the Bunsen flame as possible. And that is because you want um, an aseptic environment where you're not going to risk contamination either from yourself or to yourself. Okay, so this has already got nutrient agar solidified in the bottom. So this provides all the nutrients for the bacteria or the fungi that you're going to be culturing. So I'm going to place this right here. Now, now I'm going to just open and let the oxygen in. So it is the blue flame. Hopefully you can still hear me. Okay, so the blue flame is what you use when you are flaming any of your equipment. Now flaming means dipping it in ethanol. Notice how I've got it far away from the flame because it is flammable. And then flaming it in at the top of the blue cone, which you might be able to see. So the top of the blue cone is the hottest part of the flame. And that is where you flame equipment, but you must let it cool then before it touches the agar, because you're just going to um, curl the, uh, the melt the agar. Okay, now before we do that, you just want to lift up your Petri dish very carefully and right around the circumference, so you don't obscure any growth, your initials, the date, the name of the bacteria, which in this case is B subtilis, so I'm going to put B sub, Okay, that is underneath. Now, we cheat with street plating. We've got a stencil which looks like this. Now, I'm going to use a tiny blob of blue tack to attach the template to the bottom of the Petri dish. Otherwise, because I've verconed the bench, the paper will just stick and slide all over the place. Okay, so that is my stencil to create a street plate. Now, I want to turn it, so this part, part number one, the well, where I did first deposit the bacteria, that's going to be closest to the Bunsen flame. Now, I've got my inoculating loop, so this is what I'm going to inoculate the Petri dish with. Now, your bacteria may come in a liquid form, so this is broth, which would have uh, B subtilis suspended in it, or you might have it given on a slope. So this is solid agar, um, and it's, it, it's, it's rested on a slope when it's set, so you've got an increased surface area for the B sub to grow, and you may be able to see some of the growth on there. I'm gonna use this one today. Right, okay, so I'm going to dip the inoculating loop into the ethanol and then to flame it I'm going to start at this end pointing downwards and I'm going to move it away from the flame. You never want to put your hand going towards the flame. Okay, so until it glows red. So this is sterilizing the equipment, it's decontaminating it so that the only the only microorganisms I should have in the Petri dish are the ones that I'm investigating. Okay, so that is now sterile. Don't put it back on the bench because then you're going to have it contaminated. Now, if I just 
put this in the upthrust of the outer part of the flame, it will actually cool down. Now, this is the technical bit, but you will learn how to do this on the course. So I'm going to place the lid between those two fingers. I'm going to flame the entrance of the slope. Take a small sample, flame it again. Close the lid. Now, I have got my B subtilis on here. So, when you lift the lid, you only want to lift it slightly and in the direction of the Bunsen flame, again, to create an aseptic environment. So, following the stencil, I'm going to very gently just sweep the inoculating loop at the number one stage, so I'm creating a bit of a well, but I'm not making an indent, just a few lines scratched into the surface. Okay. I need to sterilise once again. So as I'm doing this, I'll just explain. So you've now deposited the B subtilis bacteria in the Petri dish. But that is going, the growth is going to be too confluent there. You're not going to be able to count any separate colonies. So the idea of the streak plate is that I'm going to then make streaks coming out of that well and then each time I make these streaks I'm going to be dragging fewer and fewer of those colonies into the next stage and you will end up ultimately at the end you will end up with separate colonies. So turn it and I'm going to drag three lines carefully from there turn it round in readiness so there'll be fewer colonies present there wait for it to cool and again drag some of those colonies that way turn it again let it cool So as I'm dragging, very gently, so like you hold a pencil, not, you're not gouging it out, okay, you're just dragging these colonies of bacteria along. You can't see them. And just think, in each one of these colonies, there's thousands of bacterial cells. And then the last one, okay, so here we go, the last few lines, okay. So, this inoculating loop is now finished with, so it can be put down. I'll just turn this back onto the safety flame so you can hear me. Okay, now I can actually remove this and I can secure it with the sellotape. Remember, you only put two little pieces of sellotape on the Petri dish to secure the lid. If you wrap sellotape all the way around it, you're at, you're at risk of uh, culturing pathogenic anaerobic bacteria, which we don't want to do. Okay, so that is complete. Doesn't look like much at the moment, but hopefully what you will end up with is um, a, a growth of bacteria such as this. So this is the well where you deposited all the colonies. And every time you dragged out some of these colonies, Okay, because remember you didn't dip it back in the, the slope. You're eventually going to get less and less colonies until at the very end, you're going to have separate colonies which are easy to count and identify. So street plates are used for checking to see if a culture is pure. Because when you get to this stage, if you see lots of different types and shapes of bacteria, you, you know that your sample wasn't pure. So if the technicians wanted to check that this was B sub, and it was pure and not contaminated, they would do something like this. And it's a lot easier to identify colonies if you see them individually like this. If it's confluent growth like that, you, you can't really make anything out. Okay, so what you would do then, you would work on the area and clean it, okay, and wash your hands. Okay, so that was the streak plate. And as I said, 
in this unit of the Applied Human Biology course, you would be carrying out other techniques such as the spread plate and the smear slide.